Good evening folks, this is Jacob Folds, your artist sculptor, and tonight we're going to make a mushroom gnome fairy house. And we're going to be working in self-hardening clay. This is marble X. Uh, it's also an air dry clay. And um, I've been working with it for about three decades. It's really good, hardy clay and really easy to work with. It comes right out of the box, ready to use. And that's really good stuff. Uh, a couple tools, um, <clears throat> a ball tool, a couple wood sculpting tools. Um, I like using the back end of a paintbrush when I'm doing eyes. And uh, a paintbrush. This is a nylon brush, it's really soft. A cup of water, I'm using a can of water. And also a misting bottle with a spray misting you know for water to wet the clay if we need to yeah that's about it and we'll get started in just a minute yeah we're going to be doing a finish on it so we're going to need some uh black acrylic paint and uh pearlite pigments uh, like this and we'll have uh, different colors that we'll be doing to that also. So, yeah, um, I'm going to start off with a little ball of clay. Pardon me while I roll it off screen, and then I'm going to shape it. And this is going to be for the base for uh, the mushroom gnome to sit on. So I'm just kind of squeezing it, flattening it out. And I kind of rotate it in my hands because that kind of keeps it uniform. So it's about that thick. And then I'll put that on the base of the uh, lid here that is a <clears throat> good hard flat surface to work on. And I'll kind of form it um, <clears throat> on the edges. So it's like a little hill almost, like that. See? Okay. Now I'm going to roll a stock, a mushroom stock. And I'm going to do it off screen because there's no room on the set. So it's going to look like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers like this. And I'm going to squeeze while rotating it in my hands. And that will flatten out the base. And then I'll take my finger and press it at the top. And that will kind of flatten the top. And then... I'm going to kind of, uh, holding my finger on the side like this, I'm going to kind of uh, bend it a little bit. So it's probably going to go on the base kind of like this. You know, kind of the shape of a mushroom, a mushroom right? So yeah, and then uh, then what I'll do is I'll take my <clears throat> my fingers and I'll press in to form the beginnings of the eyes and the bridge of the nose. I like that. I'll take a ball tool and put. A little indentation there and one there for the eye sockets. So it looks like that. Now I'm going to take a really small ball of clay and put it in the eye socket and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to set it right there for a minute and make another one the same size. 
so it's about the same size. I'll put them in the eye sockets. It looks like that. Now I'm gonna take, let's see what I've got here. Uh, really, this is the back end of a paintbrush. Really small one. And I'm gonna put eye pupils in the eyes like that. And I kind of want them looking off the left. So kind of like that. <clears throat> this one, this one doesn't look right to me, so I'm gonna do that over. I'm just gonna press in again. Get a little ball. Pop it in there and try again. I like that. Now I'm going to take <clears throat> a little noodle of clay like this and put it over his eyes like that. And bund it in, that's gonna be his eyelid. Then I'm going to do another one. Maybe a little bit smaller than that. And blend that in. I'm going to take a, a ball tool and just kind of blend this in here. But it looks kind of like that. I want to just uh, push the, uh, make the pupils go up underneath the eyelids so he doesn't look freaked out. <clears throat> now I'm going to take a little noodle of clay like this and I'm going to kind of bend it like that and put it over his eye for eyelid and then I'll blend that in at the top it kind of looks like that do one for the other side as well Put it in the top. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little ball of clay and form it into a teardrop shape like that. And then put it <clears throat> on there for his nose and blend that in.
I'm gonna kind of blend that in there. <clears throat> on the, the nose there. So he's kind of looking like that now. Now I'm going to <clears throat> push in with the tool here. His mouth is going to be the door. I know it's a little weird, I guess, but that's what the plan is. So, so like that. <clears throat> I guess it's okay, huh? <laughs> it's a little strange, but that's all right. Okay. And, uh, Okay, so we got that, and let's see, um, I think what I'm going to do is take a little ball of clay and shape it to go in here like that, and then I take it out, and um, I'm going to just put lines in it to kind of define uh, the planking for like a wood door. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to put it in there and as well so it looks like that. Looks kind of weird, I know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you guys aren't going to like this, but we'll see what you think. Okay, now, um, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, clean my sculpting tool off so it's nice and sharp at the end. And just... I go around the door and just kind of uh, shape it in there like that. So it's kind of defined. Right like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, score the, um, wet my tool, wet my tool, and score where it's going to go on the base, and also on the bottom. And, uh, kind of twisting motion, press it into the, bo um, into the base gently. Um, for, uh, further form it to be more tenuous, sinuous, I mean, I like that, you know, like a mushroom is, uh, and then 
I'm going to take a ball of clay like this and while rotating it in my hands I'm going to squeeze the edge of it flattening it out So it's kind of looks like that, see? And I want the edges to be really, really flat. So like that. So like that. And then I'm going to clean off my sculpting tool because I want it to be really sharp at the end wet it and score where it's going to join the top of the mushroom uh, stock and then I'm going to score that as well then I'm going to put this on here and twist it while pushing down and then I'm just going to kind of form the um, mushroom top to also be kind of sinuous like that and so that's what we got so far now I'm going to take a little ball of clay and then into a noodle a long noodle. So I have to do it off screen. Like this. And I'm going to wet it. Kind of smoothing that for a minute. And so I'm going to wet it. And then this is going to be his mustache. So I want it kind of pointy at the ends. And I want it, I want to wet it. I want to keep it nice and moist because uh, I'm going to bend it a lot and I want it to not crack on me. Um. Like normally I would do a sculpture like this in polymer clay, but I like to mix it up and not do polymer clay all the time and not do uh, air dry clay all the time, you know, just kind of mix things up so people that want to work in both, they will get plenty of uh, material, uh, plenty of uh, tutorials. No matter what they're sculpting in, that kind of thing. So, I'm going to score here where it's going to go. With a wet tool. And so it's going to go kind of like that. And around this way. And then I'm going to score the mustache. Also, and then I'm going to put it on his face and just kind of press in.
Kind of like that. So I think it looks pretty good, like that. So that's what we got so far. And I think what I'm going to do is take a ball tool. Let's see. I think I'm going to take a ball tool and just kind of redo this a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do actually is kind of change course here a little bit. First, I want to um, do an indentation underneath his nose on the mustache, kind of like a mustache would be. Kind of like that. And then I want to take a small little bit of clay. It's be pretty, pretty small. So maybe like that, really small. And roll it into an oblong shape. Put it under his um, mustache there. Because I think it's kind of weird for him to have his mouth as... <laughs> I thought it was kind of weird. I just didn't like it very much, so I'm kind of changing it. So this is going to be his lower lip here. Like that. See how I did that? And then the door is actually going to be right here. like that and I think what I'll do is instead of making a door like I did last time I think I'm just gonna kind of cut in here and carve a door in Something like that. And then put like, I can take maybe this tool, which is the, it's a ball tool, but the back end has kind of a little edge on it like that. Maybe I can put in the wood planking for the door. I kind of like that. Always oh, pretty good like that. Oh, 
looks like that so far. Now what I'm going to do is take a real small little ball of clay and you know actually every once in a while if you want to wet your source clay and wet your sculpture so that you have, you know, you, it doesn't dry out on you. You don't want to get soaking, soaking wet. Don't spray it a whole bunch. But get it a little bit wet. Just so it doesn't get all dry out on you. So I'm going to take a little ball of clay. And press it to make it like that. And then I'm going to score here and score here. And that's going to be a little patio or doorstep like that. And then I'm going to get another piece also and make another one. And again with a wet tool and again clean your tool, keep your tool clean so it's effective, right? Press it in. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So I'll do that. And then get another one. here as well on the stone I like that and I think what I'm going to do is move his mustache around like this And I'm going to do a path going all the way around. Okay? So, I'm going to do that, and I'll come back in a few minutes and show you what I'm doing, okay? So, this is where I'm at. So, I did the path going all the way around and kind of ending here. And, um, and also, I want to uh, put some kind of spots on top of the mushroom top. So I'm just gonna roll little bits of clay like this. And <clears throat> again clean my tool, wet it and score where it's gonna go and and then put it on and press it into place like that so it looks like that and I'm going to do them all all around the top okay so this is what the top looks like now and um yeah getting pretty close I think now I am going to want to take some time to do some smoothing and thinking about where I want to go with this so I'm going to get a little bit, my brush a little bit wet and squeeze it off and kind of smooth these, smooth it out a little bit. I'm 
maybe use a little bit more water if um, you've got especially lumpy, bumpy piece. But I'm not, I'm not too bad here as far as that goes for me, but if you're having that problem, if you're new to this, um, you know, i say most of the videos I do are for beginners. Um, so, you know, it's definitely fine for you to take something like this on. It might be a little rough at first, but, you know, with time, with practice, you get it. Practice is really the main thing. I mean, you have to keep in mind, like, I do this a lot. So, I spend a lot of time sculpting. And so my hands, my fingers, and all that kind of behave. They do what I want them to do, pretty much. Well, it's really wet and that door is really wet. <clears throat> so I'm thinking maybe right here I'll put maybe some more mushrooms in there. So I'll just uh, spend some time smoothing and take my time doing that. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm thinking maybe a couple mushrooms right here. So we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Maybe something a little bit different. Maybe like, um, let's see, I'll roll a ball here. And then roll it into a kind of a cone shape like that. It's really a good idea to have like a uh, washcloth, a damp cloth, and keep your hands clean while you're working. Because, uh, you know, the clay on the fingers will gunk up your work. So, I like that for the mushroom top. And then, roll a kind of a cone shape for the mushroom stalk. <clears throat> Flatten the bottom, you know, like we did the, uh, you know, mushroom gnome. So it's kind of like that. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes I put a wire in, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, because this up here is really skinny. And, um, Marblex does shrink a little bit when it dries, so I'm not going to, uh, put a wire in there because I think it might crack around it. But I am scoring. So that a bit. So it looks like that. And then, put my tool and I'm going to put it 
right in here. Screw the mushroom there. Press it into place there. That looks pretty cool, huh? And so I'll probably do a couple more in there and come back. Okay, so I I just basically did two mushrooms over here. And I spent some time smoothing. And uh, I'm going to take uh, this tool, which I rarely use for hair, but I thought it might be nice. And I'm just going to put in some real light texture for the, for the mustache. And not, you know, not really just scratching, but, you know, kind of... Um, having some flow there, you know, just having it kind of flow um, with the curve of the mustache. And then also on the other side. It's kind of a nice uh, light texture, which is kind of nice. Now in the video description, I'm going to put a link uh, for smoothing clay and uh, air dry and self-hardening clay hacks and stuff like that. So I'll put that in there. Things that can make your life easier. If you're working with this kind of clay. And, uh, you know, just a few pointers. Uh, for one thing, your dry uh, pieces of clay, you can wrap in a moist uh, cloth and put in a plastic bag for a couple of days and it will come right back and be usable. Um, and if you're going to leave your work alone, um, you know, for any amount of time, you're going to want to cover it with a plastic bag. You want to have two brushes for <clears throat> for smoothing. You want uh, maybe uh, this is an oil brush. It uh, has coarser bristle, and you would use that if your sculpture is really wet, and you would want to use more water uh, to bring it down and get it nice and smooth. And then a uh, brush like this, which is a nylon bristle, which is very soft. And um, <clears throat> you can uh, use less water and just use it for uh, light smoothing and then drag it in, drag it into your work. So there's that. And uh, just take your time and smooth. Um, I recommend getting some music on. Maybe a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and maybe a friend nearby or a friend on the phone or whatever. And uh, chat with them while you do it so it's not such an arduous, terrible thing. <laughs> I enjoy it, actually. I enjoy it a lot. So, yeah. Now, Marblets, um, you can put it in the oven for like a half hour to 
dry the surface of the clay. It doesn't dry it entirely, um, but it will dry it enough uh, to where I can put a finish on it. So I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I'm going to take a wire tool like this. Uh, they usually come uh, with uh, sculpting tools. So like if you get a package of tools, usually the wire is in there. But if it's not, you can you know, buy one separately. Put it at the back of the sculpture. Hold it to the base. To the uh, board or whatever you're working on. And just uh, pull it towards you. And it will release the sculpture from the work surface. Uh, you can pick it up. Gently, just check the bottom and make sure everything's nice and smooth like it is here. And if there's any crevices or anything like that, you want to fill them in. You also can soften the edges just by touching them gently. Or use a brush to go around and smooth the edge. And yeah, and then uh, so I'll do that and we'll come back and start the finish. Okay, so the little guy is dry to the touch. And so the first part is to use some kind of acrylic or uh, really any kind of primer uh, paint or sealer. I'm going to use this product, Golden GSC 100, but you, you can use really anything that is a primer uh, to prime the surface to make it nice and smooth and see the clay is very porous so um, if you're using polymer clay you probably don't need to prime it uh, but air dry and um, and this uh, marble X clay is rel relatively porous so you do want to seal it and I used to uh, pour it into a lid or something like that but it's kind of wasteful so what I'm doing now is I just dip my brush into it and it's probably best to do two coats on it you gotta work it into all the detail and I did have I did um, have a piece of uh, the one of the uh, steps uh, break off and I used uh, Elmer's glue to repair that. So if you have that problem, anything comes falling off, uh, you can use Elmer's glue to uh, repair it. And uh, yeah, so just go around. You want to look at it from every direction and get it a good coverage. Two coats. And then we'll come back. Okay, so uh, it... For the uh, Golden GAC 100, it's an acrylic product, so it dries fairly quickly, um, about 10 minutes. Um, next up is we're going to paint it black um, because we're going to do a bronze finish on it and actually colorful finish on it with uh, pro X pigments. So we want it to be uh, black uh, for that. And uh, I'm using uh, Utrecht's Studio Series Acrylic in Deep Black, but again, you know, you can use any kind of black paint, really. Um, and uh, you want to uh, do two coats. Um, and uh, look at it from every direction so you get all the detail. Make sure you get in the eyes, too. You know, get all the, all the detail. And, and then once you've done that, we'll come back. Now, if you're using uh, polymer clay, don't use anything but acrylic. Don't use, because the solvents uh, can hurt it, the clay, and make it all sticky and messy. So don't do that, okay? Use acrylic paint. And we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, I got the little guy in uh, all black now, and <clears throat> we're going to be using uh, Johnson's Paste Wax. Now, if you can't get Johnson's Paste Wax, 
you're uh, outside the U.S., you might try uh, beeswax or just any kind of paste wax should work. Um, I use Johnson's because I've been using it for 30 years and I like it a lot. So I, I do recommend this, but, you know, if you can't get it, you know, obviously you're going to use uh, another kind of paste wax. And uh, we're working with Pearlwax pigments and uh, we're going to be using Reflex Violet, Silver, and Antique Bronze. And, uh, again, in the video description, uh, there'll be a tool and supply list with links to places where you can shop for all this, uh, all the items we're using in this project. So, if you're viewing this on Facebook, by the way, um, come over to my channel, there'll be a link to my channel, and, um, uh, there will also be a link to this video, and uh, take a look in the video description for the tool and supply list. I'm not going to put it all on the uh, Facebook video. So, uh, okay. So, I've got my uh, colors in lids, just to make it easy to get to it. And so I'm going to uh, dip, uh, get my brush a little into the wax here. And then I'm going to kind of dab it off on the paper here. And then I'm going to pick up some Reflex Violet. And then I'm going to dab that off on the paper. And just basically paint it on. So I'm going to do the spots in bronze. So I kind of want to, for the most part, avoid those. And, uh, uh, Try to leave them black so the bronze will really stand out on them. But if you get a little bit on them, it's no big deal. So you can see it's very pretty and, uh, Let's see, I'm going to do, uh, oops, I'm going to do the, uh, little mushrooms in, uh, purple also, the, uh, the caps in purple. And I'm going to do the ground, not the, uh, not the stepping stones, but the ground around them in purple. Well, I call it purple. It's reflex violet, but I call it purple. It's easier to say, you know? It's kind of a habit. Uh, yeah. So he should be, he should be really awesome. I can't wait to see him finish completely. Yeah. Can be really nice. My step, my step broke off again because I was messing with it. You know, uh, moving it around a lot. You know, you really gotta let it sit for overnight. You know, for it to be really strong. So I'll have to repair that later. <clears throat> okay, and I think uh, I think I want to do the uh, the door in purple also. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's all the purple for now. And I'm going to clean my brush super well. Um, you can use a rag. What I usually do is instead of running to the sink, I'll get a little wax on my brush and actually I'm wiping it off of my pants. Um, so. You know, anyways, you don't have to do that. I don't expect you to do that. Um, okay, so I'm going to pick up a little more wax. Dab it. And I'm going to pick up a little silver. Dab it. And I'm going to do his mustache. Yeah. 
and that mustache. Um, and his eyebrows. More silver. So I'll make it a little bit brighter on the mustache. And I think, uh, I think actually, um, I think, I think I'm going to do the stepping stones in silver also. Because the silver kind of, to me, it looks like stone in a way, you know? So, I oftentimes do stepping stones and that sort of thing, staircases, um, stairs and that sort of thing in, in the silver. Okay. Alright, next up is bronze, the antique bronze. So clean my brush really good, I'll go into the wax, wipe it again really good, and pick up a little more wax, dab the brush, and <clears throat> I'm gonna pick up some bronze, the antique bronze. Oh, I love this, I love this stuff, man. So, so pretty. And against the purple. Whoo! Some pretty stuff. <laughs> As you can see. Make a little more waxed. A little more bronze. Let's go over those again. And then, I kind of want it subdued, you know, I do actually try to kind of not put it on too heavy. <clears throat> Underneath. I didn't do the bottom because it's still kind of moist. You know, I don't think, you know, <clears throat> drying it out completely in the oven is a great idea. I think drying it for, you know, just to do the finish. And I think that's okay for like a half hour in the oven, but really, you should probably let it um, dry naturally. I mean, I'm not really certain about that. It's just a feeling I have. So, but that's, you know, I just, I kind of teach what, kind of what I believe, you know. I don't want to be teaching the wrong thing. So, I just say do it for a half hour at the most and, Now, you, I leave his pupils black because, you know, then it looks like he's got color in his eyes, you know? That's that's why I do uh, <clears throat> the, um, you know, the pupils with the holes. Because uh, then you actually, then it actually looks like he's looking at something, you know? He's got color in his eyes, so to speak. Sometimes you see those old statues and their eyes are white, <laughs> you know? And, uh, or, or they don't have any, uh, paint on them, or they don't have any people scarred in or anything. It looks so funny. It looks like they're zombies or something like that. So, yeah, I'm, I've always said eyes that way. And, uh, yeah. So. 
put this a little bit better under here. And I think that's about it. Oh yeah, one more thing, one more thing. A little dab of bronze, a little dab of wax. Get the doorknob. Okay. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering what this is, this painting, the backdrop, it's a tree. I have some tree painting uh, tutorials and also abstract uh, painting tutorials as well. You might want to check out. Okay, um, yeah, that's about it. I almost forgot. Uh, I put my finger in the wax like this and I swirl it with my thumb, get some bronze on it, like that, swirl that with my thumb, like that, and do the edge of the mushroom. It's really cool. And then I wait about 10 minutes for the wax to cure, and I'll be back. Okay, so the final step, keeping in mind that this is paste wax, and the whole idea behind it is to protect, and when you buff it or gently rub it with a soft cloth, it brings out a really pretty sheen, but it also, makes the colors that we put on, the pearlized -like pigments, really just pop. I mean, really, really, really pop. So, I recommend taking small, uh, soft cloth, like this uh, foil here I've got. You want to wait for the wax to cure, about uh, 10 minutes. Now I did put a coat on it while I was waiting. Uh, I, I put a second coat on it just to give it a little bit more strength. Um, you won't need to seal this. Uh, this this finish will last many years. Um, pretty much all you'll have to do is dust it. Um, and it will just remain beautiful forever. It's really pretty, really, really pretty. And I hope the video does it justice. <coughs> So, yeah, nice stuff. Really nice stuff. So this is the finished piece. I still have to repair that, but, and do the bottom, of course, but, um, This is him. This is my big signature. <laughs> I didn't know where to sign it. I think it's important to sign your work. <clears throat> so there you go. If you decide to make something like this, I would love to see it. You can email me. My email address is in the About section on my channel page. You also can message me on Facebook <clears throat> and in my Etsy shop. And the links for Etsy and uh, for my Etsy shop and my Facebook page are in the video description down below the video. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.
拜拜。